Well, hey, everybody, this is Heidi St. John. This is the day that Dr. Sherwood comes on and answers your questions. And because of my speaking, traveling, schedule, insanity, he hasn't been on for a few weeks. And boy, do we have a lot of questions to answer. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. All right, you guys. So before I jump in with my friend, Dr. Mark, you will notice that I'm wearing some of the new merch from out on the road with me right now is Courage is Contagious. Also, the Faith That Speaks sweatshirts are out. If you guys are interested, check it out at the HeidiStJohn.com store, or you can just find me out on the road. As I told you guys, we have launched a brand new subscription service, and I asked Mark if he would be the first contestant on The Price Was Right for the new subscription service, and he is going to. So when the regular show is over today, he's going to come back for what I'm calling happy hour, Heidi's happy hour, and he's going to be answering some questions about himself and his life and just sharing some of his wisdom with me. So if you have subscribed to the podcast, you will get access to that content as well. All right, my friend, Dr. Mark. Hey, hey, welcome back. Hey, thank you. It's good to see you. It's been a while, and I know the questions came in fast and furious, but uh, I'm excited to be here. It's great to see you. It's good to see you, too. How are things going in Oklahoma? You guys are you're not in like tor- tornado territory, or are you? We are. Yeah, it's Whoa. been a little bit tenuous over the last several weeks with this time of year progressing all the way down to probably late May is quote wow. unquote tornado season. So okay. we have the weathermen and the meteorologists very busy this time of year. Yeah, I bet. But you guys have been safe. Everything's good where you are. So far, so good. Yes. A little bit of damage to the east of us in Arkansas. Tragedy mm-hmm. over there. Uh, a little bit up to the south. But where we are, uh, praise the Lord, we've been great. Good. Praise the Lord. I'm happy to hear that. All right. You want to jump in? Of course. Yes, ma'am. We got a lot of these. So uh-huh. uh, for those of you who are wondering, Mark and I go through these questions and we sort of pick them together. And there were so many this time that I don't know. We're, I don't think we're going to get through all of them, but we're certainly no. going to try. So let's start with Rose yep. in Maryland. She said, hey, Heidi, I love your show. So encouraging and helpful. I also love it when you have Dr. Mark mm-hmm. on. I've learned so much. I told Mark, I said, thank you for making me look smarter than I really am. I <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, I'm new to so many things. Homeschooling is one and clean living is another. I was wondering if Dr. Mark has any alternatives to allergy medicine for kids and for adults. My boys currently take Allegra, but I'd like to move away from it. I take Zyrtec and would like to find an alternative for myself as well. What do you think? Well, first, I want to thank you, Rose, for the wonderful, kind comments. We appreciate you and I know Heidi does as well. So. Um, yeah, this is a big one because it is the season, or shall we say, tis the season tis for the season. allergies. You're in luck. Uh, there is some natural antihistamines out there. Um, I like a combination of vitamin C, quercetin, rutin, and hesperidin. Those four things work really well. Um, they are out there over the counter in most pharmacies, um, but if you're interested in an exact product, what I like is something called C the plus sign Biofizz. It has them all in there. And I like it because it's in a fizzy drink and you can put one scoop in the little water and it's almost like this um, uh, fizzed up tang. It's really good. And so I actually have a, a glass of that every single night before bed. And you can do the same with your kids. They will love it. So that's awesome. When they get that, can they get that at Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi? Is that where they can find that? Yes. And in the supplement section, just type in C plus biofiz and boom, it gets right to you. I think it's important too for people to know not all supplements are created equal. And certainly, I mean, you can go to anybody can put a a supplement out on the market now. And this is what we're kind of finding. A lot of these fizzy drinks that they're selling are not good for you. Fillers and all kinds of crazy junk in it. This is good stuff, isn't it? The $152 billion supplement industry that is, is full of fraud. And guess what? It's legal fraud because as long as they don't say it cures prevents, treats, or mitigates disease processes, they can lie. And there is lies out there, and it's called clickbait, and they'll do it all the time. You need to get with a practitioner that has access to specific standardization lines. You're looking for things that have a CGMP certification. And what that means is the the supplements have a pre-production, production, and post-production standardization process that they have to meet, or they lose that. There's only like a handful of companies around the the country and most, uh, mostly of them, physicians are the ones that have access. Wow, 
Well, and it's just another one of those things where you have to kind of jump through all these hoops and you can't take mm-hmm. lab- food labeling. I mean, you, you and I have talked about this a bunch. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. Speaking of food labels, I loved this question. Shelly in Oregon, she says, Dr. Mark, which is healthier to cook with? E-V-O-O, I'm sure she's talking about extra virgin olive oil, yep. or butter. My husband says animal fat uh, is the best one for you. I said Mediterranean and healthy oils are better. Sounds like their marriage is in trouble, Mark. Weigh in. <laughs> well, let me see if I can resolve some conflict <laughs> in this married situation. Yes. No, uh, Shelly, thank you for that. Um, both are great. If you get grass-fed, you know, butter. I know. I told Mark, there, I was like, listen, we're going to answer this beautiful. question. Do not hurt my my love of butter. I <laughs> love butter. The organic grass-fed non-GMO oh. butter from Costco, Kirkland brand. Oh. Yeah. That is a great brand to get, and it's out there in most places around what you just said. Um, people can do that. If you want to take the dairy solids out of that, you can use some ghee. Uh, G-H-E-E gives you the same kind of uh, buttery flavor. Also at Costco, I believe, isn't it? I yeah. think so. Yeah. It's very good too. Um, extra virgin olive oil is incredibly good. The key point to understand with both of those two, there's a, there's a heat point, right? A smoke point is what it's called. Butter holds the heat better than extra virgin olive oil. So as long as you're using the EVOO on a lower temperature on average than the butter, you're great. You can also use things like macadamia nut oil as well. That's also very, very good. Um, but there's options out there. Avocado oil is also good as well as far as those four that I like right there are amazing. I'm always impressed with these husbands that are weighing in on this. I think it's great. Yeah. The the men of the homes out there are starting to get this. And I appreciate that so much. Being a male, we're pretty hard-headed. You know, we tend to be reactionary towards our health. And so I appreciate um, Shelly's husband out there for jumping in on this one. I really do too. Stacy in Tennessee, she's got two questions for you. What is the best medicine for restless leg syndrome? And she says she's on a medicine I don't rec- I don't recognize. Maybe you do Ropinol? Ropinol, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, she says she heard it can make restless leg worse. And then she wants to know if fluoride treatment at the dentist is necessary. We use fluoride toothpaste, but do adults need the extra treatment? Boy, she's weighed into the fluoride water. Yeah. Uh, um, get ready because you're going to get some hate mail. No yeah, matter what you do on this topic. It's big. Uh, yeah. Stacy. this is great. I'll start with the second question first with fluoride. So fluoride is a known sort of toxin. We all know that, right? And it, it can be used for some benefit, right? But it's the volume of that that becomes a problem. As far as looking at fluoride as a necessity to maintain oral health, in my opinion, and even with some functional dentists that I've learned from, it is not a necessity, right? And so please understand that. And so many times, too, you, you want to kind of think, let the natural enamel of the teeth kind of, you know, kind of develop on their own. So fluoride does have some problems in creating higher blood pressure as well, just FYI. Oh, so there's a I connection with that. that. Yeah. So even this oral antiseptic in the same kind of family, you know, like the the, the mouth uh, wash we put in there, that tends to cause blood pressure to go up because it depletes our natural production of something called nitric oxide. Pretty cool little fun fact there. Um, the, the first part of the question with restless leg, you got to think about things with the electrolytes, namely magnesium. So I'd like you to start out with taking magnesium glycinate. Try that at about 300 milligrams before you go to bed because that's typically when that occurs. And that should make a good difference. If if that doesn't, then add about 500 milligrams of potassium. And typically, those two things right there will really correct the restless leg syndrome because it's most of the time a lack or loss of electrolytes. That is fascinating. So I, you know, you know that I've been recovering from surgery, mm-hmm. and I had pretty big issue with restless leg. And someone said you should try this. It's like I think I'm Highlands, you know. Yep. So they have something called restful legs, mm-hmm. and Darn if it didn't work. Yeah. I was I was really impressed at that. And I started doing, I, I took your advice and started doing the magnesium. And yes. it really does make a difference. Yeah, magnesium is a great relaxer. That's kind of the old adage. Calcium just don't is take too much. No, you take too much, you're going to be heading to the toilet. Just FYI. <laughs> it's like vitamin C, the same thing. It's yeah. Like, Someone said to me, well, if a little bit is good, then a lot is great. I'm like, nope, a lot is not great. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> Everybody has a saturation point, let's say. That's right. You're you right. You're right. All right. Dorothy in my neck of the woods, Idaho, she wrote in to say, uh, Dr. Sherwood, if you would ever, when would you recommend a brain detox? 
And how would one go about this in a holistic way? What are the signs or symptoms that you would look for that would likely point to heavy metal buildup? She goes on to talk about her husband struggling with lots of things, thyroids, et cetera. What say you? Dorothy, uh, excellent question. Uh, Brain detox goes into all different directions. The brain, uh, you think about people you hang around and what you say, that's brain detox, right? So think about what you listen to as well. So you need to listen to Heidi St. John's more often, right? So (laughs) uh, honestly, the brain is mostly fat. So if somebody calls you fathead, say thank you. Um, The reason (laughs) that I said that is because fats hold toxins. I've seen it many times where a person can be exhibiting with brain fog, um, mm-hmm. you know, fatigue, slow brain, uh, poor memory that many times heavy metals and or even mold can play a massive part of that. So you can, Dorothy, get tested with a heavy metal test. That's a urine test typically gathered over 24 hours. And then we analyze the waste products to really get data what the body is trying to push out. But what you want to do is you want to start off with maybe just a two-week detoxification uh, process. Now, we do these all the time together as a group uh, three or four times a year, and we have hundreds of people join us. But what I'd like you to do, Dorothy, is get onto the site, and you want to order uh, one of the 14-day cleanse. It's a box. It's all scripted out for you. Uh, You can go Paleo Cleanse which is pretty good, or you can go Ultra Cleanse Plus. Either one of those. First one is 14 days. The second one is 15 days. And that will give you an idea if it's toxicity because you do the cleanse. If you feel better, look out. You probably got a good piece of backdoor information. Wow, that's great. She said something else, and I didn't read this to you, but I think it's worth Mm -hmm. talking about. She said that her husband has only been sleeping four to five hours a night for the past seven months. You talked about this last time you were on the show. How important is sleep? Yeah, as we age, the pineal gland, which is one of the main producers of this hormone called melatonin, goes down and it shrinks. That happens at about 40 years of age. So we tend to sleep less as we age and we think, well, I don't need any more. Stop. Hold the fort. Yes, you do. You still need seven and a half to eight hours of sleep to complete the four cycles of sleep, which provide regeneration restoration, restructuring, rebuilding, and even reorganization of your brain and thoughts. It is important for your husband right now, Dorothy, to start taking some melatonin or some of the natural uh, botanical substances uh, like a passion flower or chamomile, something like that, 5-HTP, to relax that. And that is not something that I would shirk on. I would say, let's do that. Let's mandate that. You can tell him Dr. Mark said so. Yeah, I love that. And honestly, you know, when we're we're not getting enough sleep, everything's messed up, yes. right? You have brain fog. I flew home from uh, from Texas a couple of weeks ago, and I really wanted to get home to be here for something that my 12-year-old was doing. And so Jay and I got up at 2 in the morning to catch a 4 o'clock flight. We had like a, you know, oh, my goodness. You know, it wrecked me. Yeah. Totally wrecked me. I, I, I came home, and I made it to the thing. But I was walking around in a fog. It took me two and a half days to recover from that. I think you're right. As we get older, we just don't recover uh, very well when we don't get a proper amount of sleep. We don't. There's something called fatigue debt. And I want our listeners to remember this. One fouled or messed up nights of sleep requires five adequate nights of sleep to make up for to recover. Fatigue debt builds up like credit card debt. It's like paying back the minimum. How's that going to work? So you, you got to, at some point in time, get rid of fatigue debt, and that means adequate sleep. Now, you're going to get some nights like you just talked about because of situations, but just make a point to be uh, more than adequate uh, the majority of the times you have control over. All right, Sherry in Indiana, she says, what recommendations do you have for migraine sufferers? Well, Sherry, many times there's things we can give for migraines, and I'll go through those. And the same time, Sherry, there's things that we do or that's a cause that's causing the migraines. The majority of the chronic migraines that I've dealt with are caused by the, the gluten that you have. So if you'll give up those grains and breads for a time, the majority of the time, the migraines will go away because the gluten in mass today creates what's called brain inflammation. And so it causes that brain to go on alarm. Now, what you can give, you can also give some magnesium. I talked about that earlier. The magnesium form you want to try to use is called L3 innate, T H R E O N A T E. That's a form that will cross the blood brain barrier. 
You can also use some theanine. That's also pretty good. Coenzyme Q10, 200 milligrams, two or three times a day. B12, about 3,000 micrograms. Those are things you can add to really relieve those migraines. Well, I really hope, and I know people are taking notes yeah. on this stuff because they can come back. And I, I said this last time you were here. You guys don't just listen to the whole thing once. Then you can go back and listen to it again, and you can stop and write things down. Uh, and so if you're in your car or whatever, taking a shower, uh, come back yeah. and listen to it again. And people can find the supplements you're talking about. Uh, you guys carry these at we Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi. And that's kind of how uh, Mark knows where you heard about this. And I think it's going to be uh, beneficial for you. Right. This was an interesting conversation that you and I had right before the show. You called it spammy clickbait. That's I, I quoted you. I wrote that yeah. down. Mark, Dr. Mark says spammy clickbait. She says, Dr. Mark, I keep seeing ads for a new seven minute secret cleanse to promote a healthy microbiome. Full disclosure, I have not tried to find out what the secret is because, of course, they want money. I think it involves ice. Uh, these same ads say probiotics do nothing to help with gut problems. And she goes, I'm just confused by this. What do you recommend for a healthy microbiome in the gut? And this is coming from a perimenopausal, early 40s, very active, overall healthy mama. Well, healthy mama, I appreciate you looking for things that are going to improve yourself, but click off of that. Um, <laughs> if you're a Christian person, God doesn't keep secrets from his children. Just leave mm. it that as far as a little bit of um, advertising wisdom for you there. That's clickbait. It's spammy stuff. It's nasty. And the, look, there's nothing in seven minutes that's going to improve um, your life for the next 70 years. It ain't going to work. Or there's nothing that you can do in seven minutes to fix what you've done for the last, you know, 40 years to your body, other than getting on your knees and praying for repentance, and then you can be uh, clean Hello. and washed white as snow. But honest to goodness, um, stay away from those things. 24-7, 365, the body goes through detox. Make sure your body has all it needs to have that process working all the time, and that will do a body good. I love that. It's good advice, too, because everywhere you go now, it doesn't matter if you're on social media or you're watching late night television, <laughs> uh, these ads are everywhere, yeah. and they, it's a billion-dollar industry. Yeah. And then people spend the money, and they wonder why they don't feel better. It's it's uh, frustrating, right? Maria in Florida is a great question. Uh, this is for Dr. Mark. I'm 50 years old and abruptly started menopause after recovering from a COVID infection two years ago. I've been struggling with hot flashes for the last two years. I've tried supplements, herbal medicine, homeopathic remedies, but without success. However, and this is the kicker, after a three-day uh, fast, my hot flashes were totally gone for about six weeks. I've been trying to figure out why fasting helps hot flashes, but I can't find any information online. What do you think? Well, there's going to be some common sense approach here, Maria, for this one. Um, first of all, COVID uh, as we know, creates this inflammatory response to the body, which creates stress. So that could have been the little trigger that sent you over the edge from perimenopause into full-blown menopause. And stress can do that, of course. That would make sense. And so when you go into this hot flash time, that's because you you lose the production of estrogen and other hormones as well. So your body's it's great to be to, a girl. Yeah, that's you, what you're saying. I'm, Just I'm, great. I'm not one, but I used to work at an office. Well, I still do, <laughs> but um, I used to be the only guy there. And so for years, and I became an expert in estrogen dominance, get the play on words <laughs> there, right? But uh, honestly, uh, fasting is interesting because on the short term, short term, it can create a little bit of stress in the body, but over the course of time, it creates more balance in the body or less stress. That takes off the stressful uh, part of life because it actually speeds up the detox system, which, you know, you, Maria, you probably lost a few pounds, you probably noticed there, and probably felt a little bit better, more energy. It takes the load of stress off your body, the load of inflammation off your body, and that can tone down all cause stress, which would have a positive effect on some of those postmenopausal symptoms you had. Well, I'm I'm thinking we you know when we when we go to happy hour here in just a few minutes, I would like to dig a little bit deeper into the fasting thing oh, yeah. and see if you can give us some ideas for how we can do a three day fast or a five day fast. Intermittent fasting, this is another huge, yeah. huge. Are you a fan? I'm curious of intermittent fasting. I am, and it's something that I pretty much do on most days. Some would call it um, compressed eating. Some call it intermittent fasting, but if you can kind of keep these things in mind, and we can go into it more in happy hour, of course, but 
you know, if you can compress the time in which you consume calories, say between six and eight hours a day, you'll find that your body will perform and function much better because the body cannot recover, rebuild, restructure when it has food in the belly because its primary attention at that point is dealing with what's inside you trying to determine, is this any good? Is this not any good? What am I going to do with it, right? (laughs) What's going on? Yeah, what is this stuff, you know? Um, So that's important. And then when you go into it more than, say, 18 hours straight, you know, where you're not eating anything, be hydrated, by the way, stay hydrated. You'll find that insulin will go down, which prompts more fat utilization as fuel, i.e. the ketogenic process. But you'll also see this compensatory idea of of growth hormone go up to preserve muscle. So you get that at about an 18-hour mark. And so you can actually do some more longer-term fastings of one or two days and really get the body in a great place by losing fat, and preserving muscle and bringing about, of course, more reparation. Man, that's good. All right. Well, I, I keep writing stuff down. I'm really <laughs> glad you're sticking around for happy yeah. hour because I'd love to uh, talk to you a little bit about some of the diets that are out there, the Mediterranean oh. diet, the keto diet, uh, all that kind of stuff, and just see what your take is on that. But we're out of time for today for the regular show. So you are a treasure. You are mm-hmm. definitely a hope dealer. People can find you at Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi. Yep. And you guys do all kinds of stuff. They can, they can do telemedicine mm-hmm. with you. They can find supplements. You guys have some great meal replacement shakes. I know I've been, I know because I've been drinking them. <laughs> there you go. Uh, fantastic stuff. And uh, and it's good quality. None of the bad fillers and all the garbage that's out there yeah. and so much of this, right? Yeah. Uh, people need to know my wife and I, we do that. We live that. And nothing goes into anyone's life unless it goes through ours first. So we, we're, we're not going to just treat people in a hypocritical way. We become part of a a community and a family and uh, people want that kind of care and relationship, we can give that to them. I love that. It certainly has been a blessing in my family. Well, thank you for coming on. And ha- and when people want to get questions to you, the yep. best way to do that is HeidiStJohn.com forward slash mailbox Monday. Or if you have an hard time with the interwebs, I heard from you, uh, you can go to info at Heidi St. John. You can email me directly, info at HeidiStJohn.com and we'll get those questions. We're trying to get Dr. Mark on here as much as we can. And uh, we're looking forward to you hanging around for just a few minutes for happy hour. And I'm going to do a little deep dive and we're going to find out a little bit more about Dr. Mark Sherwood. Thank you for coming on the show. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. For more information, you can go to Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi. And I hope that you guys will. Dr. Mark has become one of my favorite people and speaking into uh, the world of medicine, which has frankly become very confusing and frustrating for a lot of people. And so this is an opportunity for you guys to find someone you can trust and get the help that you need. Thanks for listening today. And for those of you who are interested in the new subscription service, you got to go to Spotify and click subscribe and then stick around because Dr. Mark and I are going to be having ourselves a happy hour. I'll see you right here again tomorrow at the intersection of faith and culture.